Welcome to this lesson where we're going to look at rational and irrational numbers. So a rational number is any number which can be written as a fraction of two integers where the denominator, the bottom number, isn't zero. So a number which can be written as a fraction, something like this, of two integers. And integers are just whole numbers. They could be positive, they could be negative. So we have a fraction of two integers, so two is an integer, three is an integer. So two-thirds is a rational number. 74 over 365 is a rational number. So this is what a rational number is, any number which can be written as a fraction of two integers. So an irrational number is any number that can't be written as a fraction of two integers where the denominator isn't zero. In other words, it's the opposite of what a rational number is. Um, so, examples of irrational numbers that you have probably heard of before are uh, something like pi. So you might think that pi is actually just 22 divided by 7, and we often think of it as this way. Um, and while this is close to what pi is, it's not exact. So this number is 3.142857 dot 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 dot. Um, a better approximation of pi, so this is actually not the same, it's an approximation. A better approximation of pi would be something like 355 over 113, which is 3.1415929, etc. Um, but even this number is just an approximation. And it's impossible for us to write pi as a fraction of two rational numbers. Um, so pi is an example of an irrational number. Another number which is irrational, which you would have seen, is the square root of 2 or the square root of 3. Both of these numbers can't be written as a whole number on top, a whole number on top of a, another whole number. Um, so both of these numbers are irrational. Now it's interesting to think about the history of irrational numbers. Um, this guy here, this is Pythagoras, you may have heard of him before. Um, he's responsible for Pythagoras' theorem, which you look at next year, where we could have a triangle like this, and his formula tells us that the length of the longest side of a right angle triangle is the sum of the length of the other two sides. Um, he's famous for that, and a whole lot of other mathematical um, theorems. Actually, this here is the proof of this. Um, and he had a lot of followers, and they loved to find mathematical patterns in anything to do with the world. Um, and he found them in maths like this, but he also found it in things like music as well. Um, one of Pythagoras' followers was this guy called Hippasus. So this is him here. And Hippasus set out to prove that, or to find a fraction where you could write the square root of 2 as rational number. So Pythagoras and his followers did not like the idea of irrational numbers. They suggested to them that the universe wasn't, um, didn't follow maths and didn't make that much sense, and they loved how maths explained the world. But when they came to the square root of 2, as we said before, this is an irrational number. And what Hippasus actually ended up doing when trying to write the square root of 2 as a rational number, or as a fraction of um, an integer over an integer, he ended up proving that this was actually impossible. Um, as a result, Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, the people who followed Pythagoras' teachings, ended up killing Hippasus. Um, there's different myths and legends about how this actually happened. Um, lots of people think that he was drowned at sea, um, others that he was just killed by Pythagoras' followers. Um, but this idea of irrational and rational numbers is actually something that has a lot of historical um, historical place and was really important and a very contentious idea back in the day of Pythagoras. So I hope this um, lesson has taught you something useful. Um, please bring any questions that you have to class next lesson.